Today I'm going to show you how to use layers on Procreate to make weekly stickers just like these. So let me show you what I mean by layers. Let's take this piece of paper. I'm going to add a sticker to it. Now let's say that I want to put a star sticker on top of that heart sticker. But after I place it down I realize that it's not centered. So now I'm going to have to peel it up and try to move it over. And it's still not perfect. Let's say I wanted that point to be more towards the center. I'm going to have to peel it up again and put it back down. Not an easy process. Instead, this is what it would be like with layers. I start by putting down the same heart sticker, and then I add a new layer. And now I'm gonna add down the star. Now even though it's not in the right position, all I have to do is move the layer around to exactly where I want it to be. Much easier. Today, I'm gonna show you how we can do that right on our iPad using Procreate. Before we begin, make sure you like this video, subscribe for future videos, now let's jump in. So let's jump onto Procreate. And if you look at one of the things I've been working on recently, you see a fairly simple tulip flower. And yet, if I open up the layers, you see 20 plus layers. Every little piece, every petal has its own layer. So layers are a big piece of how I design the stickers and other things you've seen me make. So let's do this together. Let's start a new canvas. I'll make it screen size. Now I wanna give you a little trick I used to pick good colors. So on my Pinterest, I am constantly saving different color palettes. If you ever go into Pinterest and search, you'll just see hundreds of these. So I'm going to look through some of the color palettes I've saved and pick one that I want to use today for the stickers I'm making. So let's see, I really like this one because it's nice and bright. So I'm going to take a screenshot, which if you didn't know, on your iPad, you simply press the power button and the volume button at the same time and it'll take a screenshot. And now I've got a picture of that color palette in my camera roll. So I'm going to go back to my canvas, I'm going to click this little wrench and I'm going to insert a photo. And I'm going to grab that screenshot shot that I just created. Now here's a fun little trick I discovered. Whenever you have the arrow selected and you're hovering on an image, if you move it over to the side and then deselect the arrow, it's gonna crop everything that is now off of your canvas. So if I click that arrow again, you'll notice that whole right side is gone. So what I like to do is I like to take that color palette and crop it down really small so it's just the colors. And once I have it nice and small, I'll put it off into the corner. And this is gonna help me pull colors from it in a minute. And you'll see in my layers, I wanna keep this color palette in a separate layer so that eventually I can turn it off. So I'm going to keep that color palette in layer one, hit the plus arrow, and create a second layer. And you can see now I'm going to be able to turn off my color palette so it won't be part of my actual picture. But while I'm working, it'll be here. In the layers, you'll see you have the check boxes, which turns on and off a layer. Also see this letter N. This letter N has a lot of different options that we're going to be going over in the future. But today we're just going to focus on adding new layers. So now I'm in layer two. I'm going to start by planning my sticker. So I'm just going to grab blue. I like using blue to plan and a pencil just because it's easy to see. Now I'm just gonna sketch out what I want my design to look like. So I'm gonna start with the size of the sticker. And actually, if I don't want it to be a square, I can change that size simply by clicking the arrow and then freeform and then just dragging it to be the shape that I want it to be. So now let me think through what I want the rest of this to look like. So I'm thinking about creating a menu sticker that I can plan a week's worth of dinners on. So I'm gonna list the days of the week down the side. And this is again just a sketch so it does not need to be neat. And then I'm gonna plan to have little boxes for each day. I'd love to do something to kind of label it as menu or as the meals that I'm planning. So I'm gonna put up over the top of it, menu. And again, this is just my plan, so nothing here needs to be perfect. But now I've got a sketch for what I want my sticker to look like. So now I'm gonna open up a new layer and start doing my actual sticker work. And you'll see I'm able to turn off the sketch when I'm done, but for now we're gonna leave it there. Now when I'm doing my actual sticker, I'm gonna go in and grab that mono line brush, which will give me a nice solid outline for the background shape. So now it's time to pick my color from my color palette that I created. Procreate allows you to pull colors right off of the screen simply by pressing and holding. You'll see a little circle pop up and the top of the circle will be the color that you're hovering over and the bottom is the color that is currently selected. When I release, the current color becomes whatever my finger was on. So if I do it again, it changes color again. So I'm gonna use this first color to create Create the background of my sticker. I'm going to start with just a simple rectangle and I'm going to use that shape feature I showed in a previous video and then just stretch it out to be the size and shape I wanted. And then I'll just simply fill in my rectangle. 
So now I have the background of my sticker ready to go. Now before adding the next pieces, I wanna make sure that I start a new layer. And this means if I mess up anything on these next pieces, my background will not get affected. And start to make my little boxes where I will put my meals in them. And then I will fill it. And now if I click that little arrow, I'm gonna be able to position it and size it exactly how I want. Now that my sticker is done, rather than trying to draw the exact same size and shape over and over again, I'm going to swipe left on the layer and you'll see an option to delete, duplicate, and lock. If I duplicate, I now see two of the exact same layers and you can't see them because they're stacked on top, but if I grab my arrow and drag it down, you'll see there I've got my two identical boxes. Now I could do this seven more times, but I can also combine these two layers to make it a little bit easier. So I have two layers evenly spaced out that are the same boxes. If I simply pinch them together, they are now one layer. Now I can duplicate this one layer and I'll go from two boxes to four. I'll do it one more time and now I'm at six and I only need one more but I'm gonna copy and paste the two again. I'm gonna erase that bottom sticker so that it's an even seven. Now you might have noticed that the seven are definitely not centered within my sticker. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna combine all the little boxes so they're on one layer just by pinching them together. Grab the arrow and now I'm gonna be able to resize and move all seven little menu boxes to put it perfectly how I want it on my big sticker. And even looking at that edge, I notice it's a little bit messy. It's not totally even, so I'm gonna grab my eraser. And you'll notice when I erase, because I'm just on the small square layer, it won't affect my background. So I'll be able to just erase those little boxes. So I'm gonna erase straight down and then put my finger down so I can make sure that it's a perfectly straight line. Let go and I'll do the same on the other side. I might even adjust it just a smidge bit more. And there we have it. So now we've got a few layers going, but the base of our sticker and the seven menu boxes are done and ready to go. So my next step is gonna to be to look into adding my Monday through Sunday labels. So I'm gonna pick the color I wanna use for my letters. I'm gonna go with this yellow, click on the wrench, hit add text. I'm gonna start by typing an M. I'm gonna to go to edit text and now I'll pick a fun font that I like. In a future video, I'll show you how to bring in all sorts of free fonts. But for today, I'm just gonna pick a nice font, hit done. Grab my arrow, which will allow me to resize. All text appears on a new layer automatically, so I don't have to worry about new layers for every single letter. So I'm gonna continue doing this all the way to Sunday. All right, I've got my seven days of the week labels on there. If you look at my layers, you see a separate layer for every single letter. And now it's time to make a new layer to work on adding the word menu. So I'm gonna grab one of my more scripty brushes and then I'll letter out menu. And just like before, because of the fact it's on a separate layer, I don't have to worry about centering it or having the perfect size. I can move it around or change it once I'm done. If you're doing your own lettering, one helpful trick I have is once you're done, you can go back through with a smaller brush and just clean up your letters a little bit, make different areas thicker, erase areas where you can tell you picked up your pencil. And there you have it. So let's say I wanna type that final layer instead. I can go back to my layers, turn off the layer I just had so I'm not permanently erasing it, it's still there, I just can't see it, and type in the word menu. Again, I can edit the style, find a font that I like, resize and put it on my sticker. And this is nice because I can quickly jump back and forth to decide which one I truly like. Another great reason to have all these layers is I'm now able to recreate the sticker with slight variations by just duplicating some of the pieces that I have. So let's say I duplicate that background. I'm gonna pull my color palette back up so that I can pick a new color. Drag and drop that nice burgundy. And then again, I can grab those meal boxes and pull them over. You can change their colors. So essentially I'm just duplicating my sticker without having to redraw everything with a whole new color pattern. To make it a little bit easier, rather than doing all of the letters together, I'm gonna pinch them together so it's one layer duplicate it and move them over. I could decide to use the text menu on one and the handwritten on the other. And now we have two separate menu stickers without spending a lot of time on the second one. And I did want to just show a few other things 
that you should know about layers. The first is whatever is on the top of the list is physically on the top of the page. So if I were to move the red background on top of the yellow squares, they're still there, but they're underneath. So I need to make sure the yellow squares are on top of the red. If you're ever playing around with layers and you need something to duck behind something else, that is what you're gonna wanna do. Another thing to know, I showed you how to merge layers, which brings them together onto one thing, but you also have the ability to group layers. So merging would make them on the exact same layer, but instead, if I choose to group down, it puts them in one group. So now I'm still able to isolate the layers, but I'm also able to choose the group and move things over as a group. A lot of times if I'm making several stickers on one canvas, I'll make each sticker its own group, just so I'm able to move that sticker around, but still have those separate layers in case I wanted to duplicate or change change anything about them. You are able to change the name of the groups and layers. I usually don't do that, but if you have a lot of layers going and you want to keep track of it, you can easily click on the name. It'll automatically call it things like layer one, layer two, but you can change those. And there you have it. We've got groups of layers, combined layers, and in the end we end up with two separate weekly stickers that you can now use in your planner, and you can apply this to any sort of sticker you are creating. So I hope you enjoyed, and I can't wait to see what you guys create.